Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Um, in today's video, I am going to give you a quick update on this specific mutation D614G that is seen in the SARS-CoV-2 virus. <laughs> If you are new to my channel, I'm Dr. Han. I love to produce review videos on different online courses and health and science information. I also like to share learning tips and tricks for students' academic and personal development. If you haven't subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button down below. So today we are going to have a quick update discussing the specific mutation D614G that is seen in the SARS-CoV-2 viruses. We're going to look at the implications and uh, what it is all about. And without further talking, let's go to the screen. Alright guys, here we are looking at another update episode on COVID-19. Okay, Today we are going to talk about a specific mutation that is called the D614G. Now we'll look at it closely of what this D614G is and what it does to the, um, to the virus and what are the implications. First of all, there is this uh, familiar disclaimer. Okay, uh, this is my opinion summarized from publicly available scientific resources, journals, and I uh, have this one is not intended to uh, serve as any advice regarding treatment, prevention, and diagnosis of any diseases. And if I mention any companies in my presentations, I receive no monetary uh, compensations from them. I have no affiliations with any of the um, commercial companies. Companies. All right, before we look at the, um, the specific mutation, let's have a recall, okay, refresh on our knowledge of the spike protein. All right, let's take a look of this um, 3D models of this um, spike protein. Now, this model is from this um, protein data bank, which is available to the pro public. Um, free of cost. Now, so here you are looking at an aerial view, okay, uh, of the spike protein. Now you can twist that protein. Now each color of uh, here represents a monomer of this spike protein, and this spike protein is a uh, homotrimer. Again, okay, it's just a recall of information from uh, some of my previous um, podcasts. Now each um, of these monomer have two units, the S1 subunit and the S2 subunit. Uh, roughly this curvature up here is the S1 and uh, uh, you can think of it as a vertical uh, curve here is the um, S2 subunit. Now the mutations happen at uh, a position called 614. Now looking at the entire amino acid sequence of this S protein, it's pretty long, over over a thousand uh, amino acid long, and the mutations happened at 614, okay, 612, 14, okay, right here. This is 612, 13, 14. So here I click this 614, actually uh, the graph would zoom into uh, the receiver the amino acid residual that it's um, uh, responsible or that has been identified with the mutation. So this um, 614 is actually located within the S1 subunit. Alright, so we've just looked at a 3D rendering of the um, spike protein and now here we are looking at, at a um, 2D representation. So here I have a um, 2D representation of a straight line that is uh, basically um, divided the uh, entire spike protein uh, into two subunit, the S1 subunit and the S2 subunit. Now the entire protein has um, uh, 1273 1273 amino acid in length and here I show you uh, roughly the um, divisions between the two uh, subunit and uh, I have the um, arrow pink arrow pointing at the furin cleavage site ie this is the site where this protein is being cut into two parts and subsequently or uh, you know entered the cell. 
Now,、uh, this blue part on this entire protein is actually where the mutation is at. Okay, at 614. So it is toward the end of the S1 subunit, but before the cleavage site. So the、uh, mutation, it's they call it from D to G, i.e., from aspartate or aspartic acid、um, into glycines. Okay, it is a single amino acid mutations. So, what are the mutation rates? You know how,、uh, you know how long have these mutations been going on? Now, dating back、uh, from statistics,、uh, you know, back in January, February, all the sample, all the um, COVID um, virus um, samples that are collected、uh, does did not have this specific mutations, these 614G mutation. So it was zero percent. And starting、uh, in March, okay, that's when uh, the um, pandemic has moved to Europe and US.、Uh, there are about 26 percent of samples collected、uh, that have this specific mutations, and this percentage goes up and up. And most、uh, recent data in May, up to 70% of sample collected in Europe and US uh, contain this、um, 614 G、uh, mutation. So, what are the implications of this specific mutations? First, this mutations、uh, you know have been shown to reduce S1 subunit shedding. Okay, so basically it is more stable on the viral particle and more stable spike. Protein lead to a increase infectivity for up to nine to ten、uh, times as the original versions. Okay, with compared to the one that without this mutation. So the、uh, it, other implications, including potentially decreases neutralization sensitivity to uh, uh, covalent zero. Okay, so this is one of the more recent finding that has not been、uh, peer reviewed yet. Okay, it is just on pre. Print right now uh, the, uh, from a research group. So this、uh, implication is huge.、Um, that also explains、uh, why that uh, there um, it, the, there are a lot more spread in infections in Europe and in the U.S. compared to parts of Asia. That could be the potential reasons. So very quickly, what are the take-home messages for today's、um, presentation podcast? Is that first the SARS-CoV-2 can Contain this six D six fourteen G mutation increases infectivity. Okay, and is seen in about seventeen percent, seventy percent of European and U.S. samples back in May. It could be more in June. We don't have the data available to the public yet. Now, what is more important is that this mutation previously not seen in China,、uh, infected cases now is seen in new cases in the Beijing, China.、Uh, that is、uh, in. June of 2020, so、uh, it is showing that there are some,、uh, you know, coming back. Okay, it, if it was、uh, originated in Wuhan, China, this virus has make a comeback with a mutation back to China. So、uh, the authority there is very, very carefully tra- tracking、uh, all the infected cases there. Okay. Now to learn more, here are the resources that link to the specific journal articles that I looked up for today's information. So if you learned something new from today's video, please give me a thumbs up and a like, and leave some comment down below. It really makes a difference on my channel. And until then, I'll see you next time. Bye.